the right people. Okay. Do you have the right people that have the right expertise that you need? And how do you determine that? Well, one way to understand that is the members' qualities and expertise, they reflect the stage in the organization's life cycle. Now, what does that mean? Okay. Well, boards and organizations go through typical stages, particularly a board. Lots of boards start, boards start, I can get that out, with what we call the founder's board. How many of you have been on a founder's board? Okay, got it. Starts there. What do you have? You have the founder. Who usually does a founder put on their board? Their friends. Their friends. Their friends. Who else? Their family. Their, family. their friends and family of the founder's board. Right. And you, you meet once or twice a year and have cocktails. You know? That's pretty much it. Okay. A lot of, a lot of great organizations started that way. Okay, so when they were looking for the criteria for membership on this board, it has to do with what? Loyalty. Are you loyal to me? Are you going to do what I want you to do? Okay. And that's, you know, that's fine for a while. But now you have to, then when you start expanding, then when you begin to have other people come in and start making contributions to your organization, you begin to realize there are ways that boards can be helpful to you in other ways. Is they typically then might move to the next stage of board development, which is what I call a working board. Or you could begin just as a working board. Now, working board is when all the members on the, on the board actually have their sleeves up and they're doing stuff. So you usually have a very small administrative staff. It may be an executive director and a secretary and maybe one or two staff members. So you're reliant on your board for what? The marketing, you're relying on your board for all the fundraising, and that's when you start looking around and saying, what expertise do I need on that board? What do you need? You need a marketer. Okay, you need, you need somebody. Well, we all need someone in finance. Okay, you need someone in communications. Okay, so you start setting those boards up. In fact, Lou Arne, tell them a bit about Just In Times. Here's one of our partners, Lou Ann Sorkin, Just In Time for Foster Youth, started as a working board, and she can give you two or three sentences about we it. We started out with four passionate people who recognized the need for transitioning foster youth. So we recruited our family, friends, and everyone else we could who were willing to write some checks and start the friend raising process of getting the word out about an underserved population. And we knew right away we were not going to do galas, we weren't going to try and do that because no one knew who we are. But we gradually recognized that you know, our, our, we didn't do official strategic planning at the beginning because we were so small, we didn't think we needed it, that was a big mistake. So when we, we did sit down and brainstorm, we said, what do we need? We need a bank, we need someone insurance, we need, and we, we targeted what we needed by profession who would give us the in-kind. And once we told our short, passionate story, we hooked them. Okay, but so did you put some of those folks on the board too? We yeah. brought, they all came on the board, we yeah. asked them, we didn't ask them to do too much. The seek, what we learned was, uh, there's, a, there's a quick burnout if you ask someone to do too much, but we were very strategic in who we needed, and we had three of our board members were here today, and we're still doing that in our board development. Is we have our wish list of, of people in the community who we know we'd like to have available as advisors, but more importantly, we're we're always targeting a bank of this. Great. That, that is thanks, Luar. And she's such a great salesperson for this organization <laughs> too. Okay, thanks. Okay. But so you get an example. Um, now here's what's interesting. I'm going to go down to a policy board. There may be people sitting in this room that you had been a policy board a couple of years ago, but you're now a working board because the economy changed. Okay, so one of the things you understand in these change stages, you can go up to one level and back to another one because it depends upon what's happening and what you need. So here's what moves, what moves the working board to a next level, is they begin to hire staff, is they are now growing to the extent that they can afford, let's say, um, a director of uh, development. They can afford someone to help do the marketing, help do the public relations. One of my favorite stories about Lou Ann's organization is at the beginning, they had the board members driving the trucks to pick, to pick up the beds and the things to help outfit the apartments of the uh, foster youth that were transitioning out of the foster care system. They were doing everything. The other thing, though, you have to be careful of in the working board is you can burn them out, you know, because they actually end up can work up full time. But that's a working board. So you see how when you're thinking about what expertise do I need on this board, you think about what has to be done. All right. 
third area we go up to is called a policy board. Um, larger staff doing most of the work. This is a board that's now dealing with generally broad policy, overseeing the organization. Um, the type of board member changes. You no longer need someone that can sit down and write your brochure for you. Okay, you want someone that's going to have linkages in the community. You're going to want someone that's going to be, and I'll get to it next, looking at where you're going in your strategic plan. All right. Um, so, yeah, you may no longer be looking for this specific expertise that people are going to do it by hand. Okay, that's a, that's a policy governing board. How many people are, feel you have a policy governing board now? Okay, the library should, yeah. By the way, this is going to relate to size, too, of your organization. Okay. You may want to be building your board there. Okay. Now, the last stage is not one that everybody goes to. You can, in fact, stop here. The policy governing board is the one that's giving you oversight. It's the one that's carrying out the broad responsibilities of a board. Some organizations move into an institutional board. Others don't. Think about institutional boards. This is an organization that's very mature. It's an organization that usually has a very large board. What <laughs> boards can you, and the major role in response, well, let me ask you, what institutional boards can you think of? Universities. Universities. Anybody else? Symphony board. Symphony board, absolutely. Big art museum boards, yeah. Okay, so if you're looking for the composition of those boards, what is the main area these boards usually target? What is the expertise they want that board member to have? Absolutely. That's where you're building the endowments, you're doing the connections. That's an institutional board, and it, it can get quite large. Universities, et cetera, museums. They exist to raise funds, underwrite activities. Okay. Um, so my sensing is for many of you, you're probably more in this area here with a couple institutional boards. Okay. So that's one element of looking at what expertise do you need in composition on your board has to do with what stage are you in your development of your board. Okay. Second area is that the board composition, the people in the board need to reflect the organization's current and long-term vision and priorities. So when you're talking about who you're going to put on the board this year, Hopefully, you're going to have a strategic plan that says, look, three to five years from now, we're going to get into X, Y, and Z area. For example, our local community resource center up in Encinitas was thinking about in the future looking at um, low-income housing. Now, while they changed their mind at that point in time, if they were going to be building their board, they would be looking at somebody in construction, somebody that knows how to find that staff. They'd want those people in their board. And you want them on the board before you're in the midst of it. So your strategic plan, your long-range plans need to be taken into account, okay? Second thing that you look at in the composition is appropriate is to have diversity and balance. Diversity and balance leads to much better decisions. Uh, diversity and balance, when I look at it, I talk about age, you know? Um, how many of you have young people on your boards? Let me see your hands. How old is young? <laughs> 21? <laughs> How about under? Under whatever, yeah. How about under 40? <laughs> yeah, right. That's the challenge, isn't it? Trying to find folks in their 20s, their 30s, and even their 40s that are interested. The major challenge, that's right. So age diversity, push it if you don't have it, can be wonderful. Gender diversity, now someone says, gee, that's not, any, that's not that hard to do. Well, you know, we've been working with a board of foster, they place foster